Good morning and welcome to episode number eight of our series of videos called Ask High Rise, where you can ask the team at High Rise Digital any questions about WordPress and the web uh, and so on, and we will do our very best to answer them for you. So in this particular um, uh, episode of Ask High Rise, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at something called caching, um, and I often get asked about caching. What is it? Why is it any good? Should I be using it on my site? Um, how do I integrate it with WordPress, etc.? So hopefully in this episode, we're going to try and answer some of those questions for you. So I guess the first thing to do is look at what actually is caching. And I find the best way to explain this to someone is to just do a little, um, a little task with them, shall we say. So if I was to ask you, and you can play along with this if you like, if I was to ask you what is 172.8 times by 401.2, off you go. I'll play along as well. So 172.8 times 400 and one, whoops, I can't type. 172.8 times 401.2 equals there. And I've got the answer. So the answer is 69,327 and 36. Now, if I was clever with video and I would have put a little timer in the corner and then that would have timed how long it took me to do that. But I'm guessing that was about, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds of time in order to be able to do that calculation. So when a computer is generating a web page that you have visited, it has to do something similar. All right, it's not calculating some numbers like that, but it's building a web page that it then serves to you. That's called processing. And the server processes the page and then delivers it straight to your browser. And that takes time. Usually it takes much, much less than 15 to 20 seconds. It takes, you know, 0.3 of a second or whatever it is a second, depending on what's got on your page. So, so that the same has happened there. I've done some processing to calculate the answer. Now, if I was to ask you the same processing or the same calculation again, so what is 172.8 times 401.2, I know the answer straight away now. It's 69,327.36, and that was happened in about a second. So what's happened there is that my brain has cached the answer, okay? It's cached it in memory. My brain didn't need to process that calculation again, even though I was doing it on a calculator. I didn't need to go through that process of doing that. I can just pull it straight from my memory. And that's exactly what caching is. If we cache, uh, add caching to a website or a web page, it means that the page doesn't need to be processed in order to build it again, and we can just serve that straight from the cache, straight from the memory, which means that it's going to be much faster. So hopefully that's explained what caching actually is. It removes the processing time uh, that's necessary to, to serve that page. So. Why is caching a good thing? Well, essentially, it speeds up your website, and fast websites uh, are better websites. Why are fast websites better websites? Well, um, people are more likely to stay on your website and make a transaction or sign up to a, a newsletter or do whatever you want them to do, take that call to action if your page is loading fast. No one likes a slow loading page, so they having to wait. Um, and Google loves fast websites. It's one of its uh, index uh, rankings that it uses. Um, uh, I don't know how, how important it is, but it's pretty important. Uh, Google likes a fast website, and you can test the speed of your website using some of Google's page speed scores and, and other services as well. So fast websites are good, and caching will help uh, with make your website faster if you've got complicated pages that need a lot of processing. And it depends what your website is as to whether you do that. So that's why caching is, is a good thing. So how do we do caching then? And more specifically, how do we do caching in WordPress? Uh, well, the first thing to look at is your host. If you're using a good managed WordPress dedicated web host, then I'm pretty sure they're going to have a caching solution in place. It might already be that you are using a caching solution that they've provided that you don't know about, or it might be that you can literally just maybe add a plugin that they've got uh, and, and ch check a box in your control panel or something along those lines. So do have a look if you're using a managed WordPress web host, whether you can just activate caching uh, and make it work without doing much at all. Now, there are some plugins in WordPress uh, which you can use, and we're going to have a look at one of them uh, now so that we can see how that works.
So, so what I thought I'd do is just show you some of the popular uh, caching plugins that are on WordPress.org. Now, I've not used them all. I've used some of these ones, and I thought I'd just show you which ones are available. So this is a popular one called Comet Cache. Um, we found this very good for WordPress multi-site, uh, which is uh, another topic entirely, but um, where you can have more than one website running off WordPress. And this works very well with multi-site, but what it does is it creates static HTML files based on your uh, pages. So the first person that visits the page, uh, the, the HTML is generated, this caches that and then serves that to the next user, so it's much quicker. Um, it's it's relatively straightforward to use. Um, it's a little bit ugly in the back end. It's not very WordPress-like, but it kind of does a really good job, uh, specifically on multi-site, which is good. So if you're running multi-site or you want a static HTML cache, that is pretty good. <clears throat> We've had more success with this one. Uh, this is called WP Fastest Cache. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to install and use. It does the same thing. It, it creates static HTML pages based on your WordPress pages, um, and it kind of does what it says on the tin, really, which is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, and it just speeds up your your site. So that's WP Fastest Cache. And then um, one that's a little bit more complicated is the W3 Total Cache plugin. Um, that has lots more options and is a bit more complicated to use, but um, if you kind of know what you're doing, then maybe that's one you could opt for as well, and uh, lots of people have had good success with it. So those are three options you could have a look at in terms of caching um, if your host hasn't got a sort of dedicated cache that they might use. So that's some options you can use for caching in WordPress. Uh, there are more than that, obviously. I'm sure if you look through the repository, there's lots of other options. They're just some of the ones that we've used with some success. Uh, I thought we'd share them with you. Now, I did mention that there are some caveats with caching, uh, things that you need to be aware of. So one of the things is those plugins, particularly the static HTML plugins that create a static HTML page based on your WordPress dynamic page, um, they're going to do just that. So if you've got any elements on your page that are uh, dynamic, for example, you're pulling in the latest tweets, um, they're going to they're going to get cached statically, and then the person next to that is going to get the same tweets that was happening for the person before it. And obviously, if you've tweeted in between that, it's going to serve, it's not going to get updated. Now, most of those have something where you can update the cache every sort of so many hours, or you can update the cache every time you po uh, publish a new post, etc. But it's just something to think about. Other things to think about are if you are showing things to a user that are specific to that user. So let's example, for example, you've got a user that logs into WordPress uh, and they see specific posts in a related post section. Then those plugins are going to negate that from working because everyone's going to see the first person's latest post that hits that particular page. So caching can cause problems with something like that. Um, Things like cookie notices, if you're going to put a banner up that says, you know, please accept our cookie notice, you can't do that using uh, PHP. Uh, you need to do that using JavaScript because obviously the PHP will get cached and then the first person that checks the box won't work, etc. So you, you, you get the idea. Things that are dynamic need to be done slightly differently. You can then think about starting to cache different parts of the page rather than the whole page. Uh, but it just get a little bit more complicated. But for most websites where you've just got a website with information on blog posts, maybe a contact form, static caching uh, of HTML is, is absolutely fine. It should work really well for you and speed up your site. So um, that's caching. I hope that's helped you understand what caching is. It's a method of removing the processing from building the page, uh, serving things from memory, so it's much faster. Faster web pages are better for lots of reasons. Um, but, but yeah, if you've got any questions about caching, then let me know. Uh, if you've got a question uh, to ask HiRise, ask the team, then let us know with the hashtag AskHiRise and we'll try and feature it in a future video. And if uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.